Bernard Horsfall as Harry Lawson, and Geoffrey Banks as Professor von Hardwig in A Journey to the Center of the Earth, the novel by Jules Verne, adapted for radio in eight parts by Howard Jones. Part three, The Lost. Yes, my name is Harry Lawson. I am a nephew by marriage to the celebrated, brilliant, eccentric German scientist, Professor von Hardwig. It was he who planned our unforgettable journey, a journey to the center of the earth. But I, in a sense, was responsible for it, for I hit upon the clue which enabled us to decipher some runic writing on an ancient parchment. It was the writing of one Arne Saknussem, an Icelandic alchemist of the 16th century. And he told how he had journeyed to the center of the earth by descending the crater of the volcano Snæfell in Iceland. My uncle was determined that we should follow in Saknussem's footsteps. So, with our faithful Icelandic guide, Hans Bjorka, we descended the crater of Snæfell. Presently, we reached a spot where four subterranean galleries opened up before us. My uncle chose to follow the eastern gallery. We marched for days and days. Our water supplies were exhausted. At last, we ran up against a solid wall of rock. We had followed the wrong road. We turned back on a nightmare march, during which I became delirious with thirst. We reached the junction of the galleries, where, it seemed, we were doomed to die. But Hans, exploring a little on his own account, heard the rush of water beyond a granite wall. With his crowbar, he hacked at the wall. He had been at work an hour, and I was wild with impatience. I am sure my uncle was thinking of more violent measures. He had, in fact, just taken hold of a crowbar when... Water, master! It is much water! My clever, faithful hand! Hey! Water! Water! Give me some! No! Do not touch! What do you mean, do not touch? The water is boiling! Suddenly gave a warning cry. Beware! Take care there! Careful! 
A great hole! What is the matter? A hole! Right here! Right under my feet! A horrible well! A beautiful well! Oh, it makes you dizzy to look down! Eh, hey, Harris? Yes! Yes, this will take us down quickly. And it will take us a very long way. It is a veritable staircase. A staircase? We can't get down there. We have plenty of rope. Have we not found plenty? I have them all here in my pack. Not one is lost. Splendid. The tidy we delay was poor. Let us go down. The well into which we descended was a narrow opening known as a fissure. We were, in fact, descending a kind of a spiral staircase. Down, down, down. It was exhausting work, and we were compelled to rest every quarter of an hour on some projecting rock or ledge. All the while, the Hansbach fell beside us in a cascade. For two whole days, we followed the staircase down, penetrating two leagues deeper into the crust of the earth. On the third day, however, at about 12 o'clock, the fissure suddenly assumed a gentler slope, still tending in a southeasterly direction. The road became comparatively easy, and at the same time, dreadfully monotonous. It would have been difficult for matters to have turned out otherwise. Our journey had no chance of being diversified by landscape and scenery. We pushed on steadily. Three days later, on Saturday the 18th of July, we reached a kind of vast grotto. My uncle paid Hans his wages, his usual three rick dollars, and declared the next day a day of rest. On Sunday morning after breakfast, he decided to put his scientific notes and calculations in order. When we return to the surface, should not be too difficult. Take the compass. I calculate we have traveled 250 miles from our point of departure. That means that the Atlantic Ocean is over our head. Certainly, this very moment, perhaps, storms are waiting above us. Men and ships are flapping in high winds. Perhaps whales are up there, playing in shows, flapping our roof. Look at it. It's all ready. It's no way down the place. Oh. Uh, let's get back to our calculations. We are 260 miles southeast of Schneefels. And according to my previous notes, we have come 60 leagues in a downward direction. 16 leagues? 50 miles into the earth? I'm sure of it. 50 miles down? That's the limit allowed by science for the thickness of the earth. Well, I agree. And according to all known laws on the increase of heat, the deeper you penetrate, there should be here a temperature of... Um, well, let me see now. Yes, a temperature of 1,500 degrees on the way on the scale. In which case, these granite walls all about us shouldn't be here at all. They should be in a molten state. So, you see, my boy? Facts are very stubborn things and overrule all theories. Hans, what temperature does the thermometer indicate on the railroad scale? He indicates... Ah, uh, uh, wait, please. He indicates 27 and 6 cents degrees. Yeah, so, science is wrong by 1474 degrees and 4 tenths of a degree. Harry, your great Uncle David, repudiates the central heat theory. He has set forth in all his glory. He's right, and I have done well to believe in him. Eh, hey, Harry? Hey. About 1,583 leagues. 1,583 and a quarter. Well, call it 1,600 in round numbers. Now, out of a journey of 1,600 leagues, we have completed 16.
Nothing in all that immense gallery except the echoes of my own footsteps. At last I stopped. Even now I could scarcely believe that I was lost. I was quite willing to think that I had made a mistake, but not that I was lost. If I had made some silly mistake, then surely I should find my way back to my companions. But if I was really lost... No. No, I, I, I would not think of it. I said to myself, back up now, it's all right. Since there's only one road to be followed, they might come by it and we shall, we shall meet. All I have to do is to go back up the slope. Just a minute now. Possible that having missed me, they too may have started to search for me. In that case, I must make haste, and I shall catch up with them. Of course, I shall ca catch up with them. There's no doubt about it. But I was by no means convinced of what I said. And as I stood pondering, another fearful doubt assailed me. Was I, after all, really ahead of the others? Well, yes, yes, of course I was. Hans was certainly following behind me, preceded by my uncle. Why, I perfectly recalled how Hans had stopped for a moment to adjust the baggage on his shoulders. It's a trifling detail, but I recalled it clearly. And then I thought, there's another sure means of not losing my way. There's a thread to guide me through all this twisting passage. The Hansbach, a faithful little stream. Come along now, I insist. Be on your way. Catch up with them. This wonderful little spring, our little river, which had spared us from thirst for so long, would now lead me straight back onto the right road. But first I thought I would refresh myself with a wash. I stopped to plunge my hands into the waters of the Hansbach stream. But there was no Hansbach stream. There was only the hard and dusty road of granite. No words can describe the despair that seized me. I went down on hands and knees, feeling the hard and arid floor. No stream, not the slightest trace of dampness. Uncle! I was lost, and I was powerless to help myself. Kneeling there, I asked for heaven's help, little as I had a right to be remembered by God. I prayed earnestly and sincerely. I felt calmer after that. I remembered I had with me provisions for three days. I remembered that my water gourd was quite full. I must not give up. I must try to find my companions. Which way should I go? Up the slope? Or down? I would go on up the slope, I decided. In that direction, I should eventually reach the point where I had lost the stream. Once there, I could regain the crater of Mount Snaffles. Why, why hadn't I thought of this before? I had a bite of food and a drink and started on the ascent of the gallery. An hour passed. I tried to recall the shape of the tunnel to persuade myself that I had come this way before. But I could recognize nothing. And then I stumbled against something solid. Impossible rock. This was the end of the passage. It was a mere blind alley. My last hope was now gone. I was lost in this vast labyrinth without a guide, without a clue, without a compass. When I stumbled, I had damaged my lamp and I had no means of repairing it. Its light was already becoming fainter. Soon it would go... Out altogether. I seemed to see a procession of shadows flickering over the granite wall, and I scarcely dared to lower my eyes, fearing to lose this last precious glimmer of light. I completely lost my head. I rose, hammering my fist in despair against the cold stone wall. Madness must have seized me. I knew not what I did. I began to run, rushing willy-nilly in this inextricable labyrinth tearing down the slope like some crazy inhabitant of the underworld, screaming, roaring, howling, bruised by the projecting rocks, falling and getting up, getting up and falling. Where was I going? I did not know. 
I did not know. Hours, hours, last minute. At last, my strength exhausted, I dropped senseless to the floor. I opened my eyes. My face was wet with tears. How long I had lain there, I did not know. I had no means.